Hey folks, I'm Lance Eaton, and in this video, we're going to cover five tips about using AI in the grant writing process. This is particularly focused on folks in higher education, but obviously can be used in many other spaces. So I'm going to share uh, some additional resources and stuff in the description below. Be sure to check those out, but let's get started. So we've got a lot to cover, and these are our main objectives. We're going to go through these quickly, but there's lots of help and follow-up resources on that resource document. It includes a lot of the text from here, resources to explore, and lots of prompts and generative AI outputs as examples for you to explore. So find that in the description, and that resource is covered with a Creative Commons license, so you're welcome to share, borrow, and adapt. All right. Our first focus is on how we might be using this in the context of our work. What are things we need to bring to how we think about using this tool in our respective institutions? Generative artificial intelligence offers grant writers and teams the opportunity to do more with less uh, in different capacities. It is a hustle to get and find money, bring together different folks within the institution to plot the viability of grants, to apply and then actually execute the grant. AI has some real value in reducing that work, but it takes some practice in understanding how to do it well. That said, there are three areas that stand out in supporting that work. Leveraging AI to help build out new proposals or adapt previous proposals to new opportunities makes perfect sense. However, you need to do it piece by piece for the most effective results rather than just trying to give over the entire application. I also find that using AI to help figure out timelines or order of operations and assessments and the like can really move the application process along more quickly. Grant writers can also use it to build out things that other institutional members can review. For instance, if you're working with an instructional designer on a project, you can use AI to sketch out more clearly what you plan, uh, what your plan is for them and ground it in their language and provide it to them as a conversation starter, rather than starting from scratch where you both are trying to find your way. You can also extend that further and actually create a menu of ways the, the collaboration uh, or grant might work. And you can also use, start to use AI to scope out budgets. And then here's where grant writers might save some pain and headaches in the future. Uh, they can use AI to make comparative analysis about grants, including the likeliness of the institution to get the grant based on its proposal and previous data about recipients. You can also think about how you might use it to better anticipate the actual efforts in, resource, in the resource usage that a grant might require and what are the likely outcomes or possibilities of pursuing such a grant? Okay, but how are we using it now or how might we be using it individually? Of course, if we're going to bring that framework to our campuses, we have to get familiar with and comfortable with generative AI. To that end, we have to be playing with it and getting comfortable with it. So, we've got some low-hanging low fruit here that could get you very comfortable, just familiar and ready to use it. This might include having generative AI produce date listings or initial communications you plan to send out. It can also be getting quick visuals without ceaselessly searching, as well as repurposing content more quickly for different audiences. As you get settled into using it, there are some things that I think is where it really gets interesting. You can use it to contribute to reports, such as those that go back to the funders or the institution itself. To that end, you can create materials for the institution about the grant process and how they can contribute or expectations and requirements. And whether it's part of the submission process, the recruitment process for some grants, or the sharing of, of outcomes and results, these new AI tools allow for you to move more quickly and potentially even create multimedia. Finally, there's potential ways that folks are starting to really think about it. For instance, using AI to guide other institutional members to do a first draft of a grant application, or using AI to help elicit feedback about your or other applications. And of course, there's potential for using it to make sense of data, um, and that data may help you determine whether to apply for, for grants or for the reports that you need to create as a result of funding. So what does it look like to use these tools with other folks on campus? What might it actually look like? So using AI can help with reconnaissance on grants and funders to help determine if it's a relevant match. As I mentioned, it can also be used to draft application and reporting content, uh, and of course, repurpose what you've already done. Where it can go from there is equally helpful in that you can use it to start drafting content for, for a subject matter expert to review and edit, starting from a moving position rather than with a blank page. 
You can also use it to elicit feedback about the tone and style and to reduce or expand areas, right? So having it help you edit down or build out a section based on, you know, the strict parameters of the grant. It can also be, it can also help in refining applications from non-grant team, non-grant team members that might need some polishing. But where it starts to shine uh, is in the more complex ways. For instance, use it to help identify problems and pitfalls with what you want to do with the grant based upon the type of institution you are. It can further help in planning and processing the ex execution of the grant, especially when you have, have to make adjustments or pivot. Right? AI might be the brainstorming partner that helps you explain why the grant went in direction A instead of B. Finally, you can use it afterwards to assess and determine the success of a grant and leverage insights into future applications. All right, but what are the practices around AI that we want to encourage and discourage? Particularly because we're still early in understanding all the implications of these tools, there's a few things we want to keep in mind. Be clear with yourself, your team, and whoever else is involved how you plan to use it throughout the process. Continue to try different things. In the guide, you'll see lots of different prompts to try out. Collect as many use cases as you can to help you think through how to best use it. Along those lines, try different tools to learn the contours of AI across different areas of use. Document your usage, meaning make sure that you keep track of what you're doing with it. This is helpful for you in your own development, as well as for folks that you work with if you want to encourage usage, making sure you can point to and show how you're using it. And of course, you always want to note when you're using when you're using it. It doesn't have to be perfect in how you cite it, but you need to acknowledge how you're using it. Uh, and I think that's an important thing we're going to have to figure out as we continue to go through this. But what should you not do? Uh, dismiss it because it is it isn't self-evident. Like any good program, it takes a little bit of time to learn its contours and use it well. Uh, it goes without saying, but double checking the outputs. Do not lose money because the output said it was a large language model, right? Along those lines, be sure to check for tone and approach. Make sure it still represents the institutional voice and soul. And don't put any individual or institutional private data in without an institutional agreement with an AI tool in your IT department saying, yes, it's okay to put in these types of, uh, these types of information. So let's take a look at some specific prompts, kind of where we, you know, we've covered a couple of good points here, but like how or what does this look like? So these are four areas that I find to be incredibly useful in ways that contribute to my work and reduces the amount of time I need to work on things. We'll look at each of these approaches. One thing to note here is that I'm going to briefly show and talk about the prompt uh, that falls under each of these approaches. What follows will be a series of screens with lots of text. Don't race to try to read it all. Don't feel like you have to pause the screen. That's not the goal. Rather, I just want you to get a sense of what its inputs and outputs are. All the prompts and the responses from Generative AI can be found in the resource document in the description below, along with a lot of other prompts to try out. So these next slides are mostly to give you a flavor of what can be done so you can go and explore that document and try these tools on your own. So AI can be a great task minimizer, not necessarily eliminating a task, but significantly reducing it. In this example, I asked AI to provide an analysis of the Hewlett uh, Foundation's Open Educational Resources Grant Program to assess its merits and whether it would be appropriate for a Connecticut community college to apply for. And so here, so here it is. It begins to share different insights and considerations that are helpful, such as its alignment with the institutional message, with the institutional mission, the award range, the actual amount of work it will take, and what is needed to execute the grant. It's a nice, concise output to make sense of grants that we might be interested in pursuing. When it comes to brainstorming, AI can identify a range of things that you might not have thought of and therefore extend your thinking about what you might do or how you might do it. In this example, I'm using the, I'm using the context of my institution, College Unbound, to determine what might be unique types of OE open educational resource proposals that we could come up with that aligns with our mission. And so it provided about six or seven examples. And what's great is I can continue to brainstorm by asking it to provide more or asking it to mix the best parts of two or more of the ideas, right? So now I have several different clear, several different and clear directions to go. I can think about OER-based experiment, experiential learning projects. I can think about uh, community-based OER collaboration or OER for career tra 
transition and advancement. Some really cool things that I could further follow up on. And so for many of us, uh, the blank screen is so intimidating. Having AI start a draft is something that can be incredibly important, incredibly helpful, and allow us to build from there. Save us that time and that, that blank screen and just actually get moving. So in this prompt, I actually took one of the ideas from the brainstorming prompt you just saw, and I asked it to develop a program that focuses on community-based OER collaborations in preparation for the grant. All right, so I said, actually, this is the thing that I want to apply for. This is what I want to do with it. Now it provides a first draft pathway to build out such a program and some of the essential elements to include, such as a needs assessment, partnership development, content creation processes, and partnership strategy. I can follow up with more prompts to get further details and information from for each of these pieces, building out the project quite substantially in minutes rather than hours. Finally, data analysis. The thing is that most of us can do this, and there's but there's so much to do that if AI can help us in this process and do these things more quickly, uh, it really does feel like a win. So in this case, I actually asked it to review an old grant application that I had done probably about a decade ago uh, and review it with a given rubric to provide both numerical and qualitative feedback. Right. So I'm asking it actually to analyze my own uh, my, my own grant application and actually give me a, like give me a review of it, rate it. And so it can provide with some good analysis of the grant, with some places that I can improve upon. So here it's like, you know, here's your rating. You know, student savings impact is a five out of five. The teaching and learning impact is a four out of five. And then an explanation of that and then recommendations on what I might want to do next with it. All right, one final bonus tip. Uh, and this is to improve your prompting outputs with generative AI. The first question to always ask generative AI is the question to improve your prompt, right? In this case, I usually start with this as my prompt. Improve this prompt to maximize the creativity and analytical abilities of a large language model, colon, and then I put in my prompt. The new, what the AI will put out is a new prompt, and that's the prompt that I actually want to use. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm saying, hey, generative AI, here's the thing I want to ask you. Can you improve how I ask this question so that I get a better answer out of you? And time and again, it gives me better results. It gives me much more, uh, a, a lot more detail to work with. And also there's some things I sometimes have to edit in kind of what that new prompt is, but it always gives me something better. All right, those are your five tips and bonus tip. As I said, check out the resources. They're really helpful. They're a good place to go from here. And thank you so much. If you have questions or comments and the like, please put them into the uh, comments below. And thank you so much.